All right, so now we see the quadratic formula as if you're given just a general quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. There it is. The solution is always the following. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So that means is, remember, a is the, the coefficient on the x squared term. The b there is the coefficient on the x term. And that plus c is the constant coefficient. Okay? You can put all that together, and you got the thing. Let's look at some actual examples using the quadratic equation. Now, by the way, here's what I do. When someone gives me a quadratic equation like this to solve, the very first thing I do is try to factor it. And you might want to try that too. I suggest you do it because just don't use the quadratic equation because you know it because actually it's sort of a pain to use. So I quickly try to factor it. So same sign, they're both negative. I got to have an easy number here whose product is 3 and yet combine to give 5. So that's going to be either 3 or 1 or 1 and 3. If I put a 3 in here, that gives me a 9 and another 1 would be a negative 10. That's no good. If I put the 3 in here, that would give me what? Put a 3 in here, that would give me a 3 and a 3, which would be a minus 6. And that's shy, or actually overshoots, the, the minus 5. So this can't be factored in an easy way. So I'm going to go right to the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula now, you have to understand who's playing what role. Think of that as a play, and now we're going to put in the actors. The role of A is going to be played by 3 here, because, um, because that's the coefficient on the x squared. So this is going to be A. The role of b tonight is going to be played not by 5, but by negative 5. And finally, in the role of c, we have the number 3. Okay, So now we're just going to plug in to the quadratic formula with these values. So what is x equal? Now you really, have to, you really want to memorize this, and it's almost like a little mantra. x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Ah. So x equals negative b. So it's negative negative 5, which would be 5 plus or minus, there are the two solutions, square root of what? b squared. So I take minus 5 and I square it. That's 25. Minus 4 times ac. Now what's ac? Well, a is 3 and c is 3. So this times that is just 9. So 4 times 9. That's not. 49, it's 4 times 9. All over, the whole thing over, 2a. So 2 times 3 is 6. So there's the answer. Let's see if we can actually work that out a little bit. x equals 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus, and what is uh, 4 times 9? Well, that is uh, 36 divided by 6. And what does this equal? 5 plus or minus. And now what's 25 minus 36? Well, that's going to be the square root of, it's going to be negative, you'll notice. And it's going to be negative what? I think it's going to be negative 11 all over 6. So what does that mean? Well, what this means is that this equation has no real solutions at all. This can't be solved with a real number x. However, the quadratic formula actually gives us the power to produce what the two answers really are. The two answers, in this case, are going to be imaginary numbers. And we can write them like this, 5 plus or minus. Remember that the square root of minus 11 is just the square root of 11i, because i is the square root of minus 1, all over 6. And so those are our two answers. These are imaginary. imaginary answers. OK, so, so there are no real answers to this one. But in fact, we found the two complex solutions. One is 5 plus square root of 11i over 6. The other one is 5 minus square root of 11i over 6. So let me try one more. This one's going to be a little more exotic. Coefficients are going to be square root of 2x squared plus 3x plus the square root of 2 equals 0. And now I want to solve this. Well, I'm not even going to attempt to try to factor that because the square root things just throw everything off. But we know who's playing what role here. Uh, square root of 2 is in the role of A. B is being played by 3. And the square root of 2 is also going to play C. Let's see what happens this time. So I have x equals 
negative b, so that's negative 3, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so I square 3 and I get 9, minus 4 times ac. That's going to be times the square root of 2 times the square root of 2. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is just 2. So times 2 all divided by 2a, or 2 square root of 2. And what does this equal? Minus 3 plus or minus the square root of, well, this is 9 minus 8. That's just 1, all divided by 2 square root of 2. The square root of 1 is just 1. So in fact, this answer comes out really nicely. This is going to be minus 3 plus or minus 1 divided by 2 square root of 2. So there are two answers there, and let's actually explore both of them. So we have x equals, what does it say over there? Minus 3 plus or minus 1. I'm checking out the actual white box. 2 square root of 2. So let's look at these solutions and write down what they are. So the first one, x equals minus 3 plus 1 over 2 square root of 2. What does that equal? Well, minus 3 plus 1 is minus 2. Minus 2 over 2 square root of 2. Those 2's cancel. Factor on the top, factor on the bottom. I'm left on the top with an invisible minus 1. Always a minus 1 factor. So minus 1 over square root of 2. Some people might like to rationalize the denominator, so I'll multiply top and bottom by the square root of 2. And then I'll see minus square root of 2 divided by square root of 2 times square root of 2 is just 2. So there's one solution. Neat. And what's the other solution? The other solution would be x equals, so I did the plus 1, now I'm doing the minus 1, minus 3 minus 1 over 2 square root of 2. So minus 3 minus 1 is minus 4 over 2 square root of 2. I can cancel again this factor of 2 with one of those factors of 2, which leaves me with an extra factor of 2 on top. And so I see minus 2 over the square root of 2. That's a fine answer, but if you want to rationalize, multiply by 1 by multiplying top and bottom by the square root of 2. And look what you get. On the bottom, I get a 2. On the top, I have a factor of 2, so they cancel. I'm just left with minus the square root of 2. So the two answers to this quadratic, e to this quadratic uh, equation is x equals minus the square root of 2 or x equals minus the square root of 2 all divided by 2. And actually, you can check by plugging these values back in for x and seeing that each of those values, when plugged in, produce 0. So the interesting thing about the quadratic formula is not only can you use it to solve really sort of complicated, awful looking things like this, where you have square roots as, as coefficients, and you're still able to get a nice, tidy answer like this. But it even allows you to figure out the solutions to quadratics that before we couldn't even find the solutions of, because there aren't any real solutions. In fact, the solutions are imaginary. The quadratic formula will always produce those two solutions. So now, with the quadratic formula, we can see quadratics always have two solutions. They might both be real numbers. They both may be the same, in which case it would look like we only have one, but it's really two solutions. It just happens twice. Or in the case when there's not two real solutions, it turns out they'll still be there, but now they'll be imaginary. So we can see quadratics always have two solutions, either two real, and those two real may be the same, or they'll be two imaginary. And the quadratic equation, quadratic formula, empowers us to actually find those solutions always. Just be careful with who's playing what role. A, B, C, plug in. It's easy as one, two, three. Do, re, mi, et cetera. See you later.